All right, so talking about shadows, uh, I just want to teach you guys uh, quickly about a concept called a shadow attenuation. Um, so some of you, again, might be familiar uh, with some of these concepts, but I, I just want to go over it so everyone's kind of on the same page. Um, so shadow attenuation is the basically the softness of a shadow. And we need to know why a shadow is hard, uh, sharp kind of, or, or soft. And it's important to know that as a compositor because if you're compositing a shadow, you don't know how sharp or soft or blurry to make it. And you shouldn't just be guessing. You shouldn't just be you know, blurring it until you know, whatever. You need to think about um, the physical properties of light. Um, so there's two relationships that, uh, there's two things to consider when we're thinking about the softness of a shadow. And I'm gonna show you guys visually. Um, so, the first one is uh, the distance. Let me get the draw tool. So the first thing is the distance between our light and the distance between uh, the object in relation to the other object. So in our case, uh, this plane and this ground. So, um, so the distance between the two. Uh, when the floating object in this case it could be a tree or it could be whatever but uh, the closer it is to the ground otherwise uh, known as the further away it is from the light but closer it is to the second object the sharper the shadow is going to become so if I just play this you'll see that as our object gets really close to the ground it becomes a very dense dark shadow and also very uh, sharp on the edge uh, and, and the reason for this is because of the uh, two angles here, which you're going to see in a, in a moment. So if I bring it close to the ground, you get the sharp shadow. If we bring it up, um, we see that the shadow starts to become much softer. And it's just the way that the light is bouncing around. So we see that this blue line is, there's no light going, the, the light rays are, are going straight and, you know, they're not going inside or underneath this plane. Um, and the, the closest angle is, is, is out here. So basically the distance between these two lines is called the penumbra. And this is the softness of your shadow. So it's the attenuation, the level of softness in the shadow. So all you need to remember is the further away it is and the closer it is to, let's say the ground, it's gonna be sharper if it's higher up or if it's closer to the light but further away from the second object, it's gonna be softer. Uh, the other relationship we have is the size of the light itself. Um, so that's the second relationship. And what I mean by that is a small light uh, is going to ca cast sharper shadows. Um, so if we have a bright sunny day, uh, it's gonna, the sun is going to act like a small light. It's going to act like a, like a pinpoint small light. And it's gonna have more direct shadows, sharper shadows. But if it's, a, if it's a cloudy day, you're going to have softer shadows because the clouds act as a diffusing um, material. So the light is bouncing around in the clouds, and now it's acting like a much bigger light. So let's see what happens. So we have a small light. Now let's make it into uh, a bigger light. So if we increase the size of our light, you'll see uh, that our shadow becomes much softer. So a sharp shadow with a really small light and a very soft shadow with a large light. And it's because of the, the uh, angles here of how the light's bouncing around and also the amount of light that's getting you know, underneath. We can see that since the, the light is uh, coming from a wider source, it's reaching further under our object. Whereas the small light, the rays aren't reaching underneath just because of where the light is placed and how small it is. Um, so that's uh, shadow attenuation. And something we need to think about, uh, you know, if we're thinking about, for example, a car wheel on, is touching the ground. So it's going to be a, a dense, darker shadow than maybe the back of the car, which is a little bit off of the ground. Um, so those are things we, we might need to consider when we're compositing a shadow. Uh, also, we need to consider matching the blacks, of course. So I taught this in my Nuke 101 class, but I, I'm just going to bring it up once again quickly. Uh, and one of the things we need to consider with the blacks is there's two factors 
uh, primarily to the level of um, black in an object. The first one is distance from the camera and if there's atmosphere. So we can see further away through the air, uh, light is bouncing around and becoming a bit blue. It's absorbing you know, some of that, or it's, re it's reflecting some of that light. So we're getting a bit of a blue tint further away and a, a slight blue haze even here. Um, so the darkest thing, if we gain up, is those hills. There's nothing pure black inside. So that's the first consideration. Uh, the second consideration we need to think about is um, light contamination. So if there's like an orange, if there was an orange light up here, some of the blacks of this might become a little bit contaminated orange. So light and uh, atmosphere are the primary um, effects of, on the black point. So if we just look at what this does. Uh, so what we need to do with each of these is match the black of the sphere to something that's directly near it. So if we just scrub forward, um, you know that would be this here. So if we just gamma up, this is the darkest thing near the sphere. So we would say, okay, let's match the black point of this to that. And then we would do the same with this sphere. We would say, okay, let's match the black point uh, of this sphere to there and the last sphere to the hill. And this is what we get. So if we have our non-matching black points, there's you don't feel the distance. And when we match our black points, you can see, so this is not matching and this is matching. So we can see uh, the relationship is, is kind of better. Uh, so those are the things to consider with shadows when we're compositing. And yeah, we can move on uh, from that.